Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to talk a little about a little bit about how uh, the new routing stuff in Drupal, Drupal 8 will work and how that is based on shared components with <coughs> Symfony and uh, Symfony CMF. First of all, uh, I am not Tobias, who was originally supposed to give this talk. Uh, I only I was asked to do it like a week and a half ago, and prior to this, I didn't actually know that much about this stuff. So I've been trying to read up, read up on it like crazy, uh, but there might be areas that I cannot answer. But luckily, the guy who did it is actually here, so maybe he can help us. So. Definitions. What is routing? Generally, when dealing with MVC for web frameworks, a thing that's not really very well defined is how do we actually get to our controllers' models views? Um, and that answer is the hidden R in MVC, I guess. So whenever a HTTP request comes in, then uh, a miracle occurs, and somehow the the request is transferred to the right controller, and and everything happens in, happens the way we want it to. And basically, each web framework historically has done this slightly different ways, um, slightly different but also similar ways. Uh, we had something like it in Drupal seven. Um, if you've ever written a Drupal 7 module, you're probably familiar with these huge arrays where we have all these magic keywords that we Drupal reacts to in interesting ways. Um, and even more interesting, if you want to mess with the routes or menu callbacks or uh, whatever we call them, uh, provided by other modules, you can use this nice hook menu alter to tweak whatever. So, for example, this example is from the diff module, which replaces um, the standard revisions overview in Drupal core with one that ha actually shows the difference between revisions. Uh, it, ha it can also be used to change the access control on other routes. So you, if you want to have your own custom access control for Node or whatever crazy stuff, um, the Drupal the menu system in Drupal seven is not very well understood by many. Uh, it has this big router table and and stuff happens magically at cache rebuild and. No one tends to worry about it, but if you ever get in trouble with this, you're going to have a lot of trouble. The system in Drupal 7 has a lot of different responsibilities. I won't read them aloud, but it does a lot of stuff. That's not just routing. <laughs> and uh, that leads to interesting problems. So Symfony has a very different take on this. It basically has a big file called routing.yaml, which defines all the routes for your app. And that's very nice, uh, but there's a problem. As the Symfony documentation says, Symfony loads all routes for your application from a single routing configuration file. This file can contain includes, so you can say, yeah, I, by the way, I would like to add the panels route to my module or something like that. And that's fine for Symfony, but we wouldn't really want our Drupal 8 module to have to contain instructions like go into the core folder and open the routing YAML files and insert these lines here. Um, because, yeah, that's not really a, a nice, friendly experience when the user downloads a new module. And this basically means that anyone who has, who needs to administer your Drupal site would have, need to have access to the file system. 
Uh, it will also mean that we have this huge file that contains information about where we show these local task tabs. So if you need to, if you want to hide the local task tab uh, on the sign up form, so the request password tab is hidden, for example, you would need to go and edit the routing file. That is not very pretty. Um, so a different solution was needed. And as it happens, there was there's a similar project, or no, not a similar project, but they, uh, this, from the Symphony side, they have been trying to work on building a very nice toolkit of content management related components for Symphony. And they had a similar problem. Uh, basically, the, what they wanted to be able to was to have some routes being defined by the admin UI, so when you go and create a new page, you enter a URL and use that as a as a route, so to speak. So you create page slash about, and that's stored in the database. But that can also be combined with real normal or regular Symfony components that loads routes from static files and code. So collaboration happens. Uh, Two of my colleagues, and Larry and a few other guys, uh, including some people from the EC Publish uh, framework, got together, or I don't know, did you get together? Uh, but at least they uh, figured out to collaborate on, on building a better system for this. It says hope. <laughs> um, So what did they do? Basically this, um, and I'll try to explain this graph. Uh, let's see if I can liberate the microphone here. Uh, uh, oh well, I hope you can hear me. Basically, it all starts with the request that comes into Drupal that is passed into what is called a chain router. And a chain router, or the chain router, is basically a part of the Symfony CMS components, and it allows you to have multiple sources of routes for your Symfony app, <coughs> or in this case, for Drupal. And these routers, ordered by priority, will be called whenever there's an incoming route. Nice, very nice, thank you. How does it work? All right, yeah, much better. <laughs> and basically what Drupal, go what Drupal ships with uh, is a, a configuration where the single router that's configured out of the box is the so-called dynamic router. And that calls into a Drupal component called <coughs> the route provider. And as the name implies, this route provider loads the route collection from the database. And before this step, whenever you enable the Drupal module in Drupal 8, you are allowed to have a module name .routing.yaml file in your module, which has the same syntax as the standard uh, Symfony routing file. But this file will be processed by Drupal and read into the route table in the route database. So whenever this happens, whatever routes you define in your module will be taken into consideration. This one loads all possible matches. Uh, so if you have a long URL, so if you have uh, node slash edit slash div slash, you know, whatever, it will also load slash node and node slash edit and, is that wrong? Uh, okay. What's the fit for then? Uh, it's for one code. The route provider just matches on path, but if you have multiple routes with different uh, except headers or whatever. Oh, yeah, my, my bad. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it loads all routes where the URL can match, uh, and then it goes through the matcher. And for your route, you can provide additional 
uh, parameters that me needs to be uh, that needs to fit before this route is a match. So it could be that this must this route only accepts post requests. It could be a special header condition, so this route only uh, will only serve uh, JSON data. So it could be the accept header, um, and th there's a whole whole bunch of, of conditions you can provide for your routes. And once the matcher is done selecting which route is to be uh, processed, it will go into the. It will m simply modify the request object. Um, the request object in Symfony has so-called attributes, uh, and these attributes are metadata on that different modules have attached to the request. So the selected router will simply be another attribute on this request object. And then we go into what is called the enhancing phase. And enhancers in Symfony is a very, very powerful tool in many ways. So in Drupal, Drupal 8, for example, the authentication of users is a so-called enhancer. So whenever a request comes in and the router has been defined, the, the authentication enhancer runs on the request and looks at the token and figures out is this a valid authentication token? And if so, it adds stuff to the request object, telling you, you that this, this request is authenticated and the user is so-and-so. And the same goes for all sorts of parameters and, and whatever else you can find on the re request object is generally added by these enhancers. <coughs> and once all that is done, we have a final request object. And this request object is then passed to the controller that the route has defined that it wants to, to use. And this is pretty much what I just said in text form. <laughs> uh, but basically what it means is that when I go to my Drupal site and request node slash 42 slash edit, Drupal will then go through all the stuff and de decide that the nodes edit page controller or whatever it's called is the right controller, uh, the right route to handle this and will do whatever is necessary to call it. The use of this um, most people will likely never need to mess with this. So the common, <laughs> the common use case will simply be to go at this stuff to your module file or to, your, to the routing file in your module and just be happy that you, all this magic works. Um, but if you look at the diagram, oh, where was the diagram? Here. There is the use case for a theoretical other, other router. So here you can also you can attach a standard <coughs> Symphony router and say, I want this router to, um, so provided that you have a standard Symphony app that you want to combine with Drupal, you can simply mount it inside your Drupal application and say, yeah, but all requests that start with API are, are now to be handled by this other router. Um, or basically all requests will go to each router in the priority order and then you configure the other router you add to only listen to those that start with API for example. Um, the other use case <laughs> um, so since hook menu is dead, hook menu alter is of course also dead. And, but luckily uh, there's another way to do this. And basically, um, this is a so-called enhancer. Uh, is it not? 
All right. Yeah, the name the naming for all this is sort of confusing. But the main point is that you can add a so-called route subscri subscriber uh, that gets to mess with all routes that are found. Um, so when the router collection is found, the route collection, not router collection, the route collection, the p collection of possible routes for URL, when that is determined, then you're allowed to mess with it. And basically what this does is check if the user has selected uh, that he wants to use the admin theme when editing node pages. And if so, uh, if this is a node operation route, so if this is the user, the node edit page or a similar page, then set the option on the request admin route true. And admin route true is then later recognized by Drupal as, hey, let's use the admin theme for this page. So this is one thing where we would previously had used hook menu alter. And the interesting thing here is that the route object is, is fully available here. So you can not only can you set options on it, you can also change options on it. So if you want to change whatever, so if you want to change one of the routes provided by the views module, you don't have to mess with the views uh, module's routing file. You can uh, modify it via this process. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So some of the use case, another use case for um, adding another router to the Symphony side of things would be uh, backwards comp compatibility. I know EC Publish does this. Um, and they do it for the reason that they don't really want to, they want to provide backwards compatibility. So if you have an old EC Publish module um, using the old EC Publish router, which I don't know a lot about, but the general idea is that you can still use your old EC Publish stuff over there. And EC Publish has then implemented a Symfony router that calls back through their old routing process. And that is then added with a lower priority. So first it checks with the Symfony, the standard nice routing stuff, the same as we've, pretty much the same as we've seen here. First it checks with that, do we have anything that matches? And if not, then it goes back and calls the old, the old school routing. Um, oh, yeah. And you can make your own routers if uh, you have like a high performance use case. If you have like a API that re receives a thousand requests a second or something, it could actually be beneficial for you to say, okay, I have this ultra optimized router. It just has these three methods and I'll just go into plug it in before it calls the Drupal router. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility here, which is very nice. Um, so basically, that's the general overview of things. Um, I have d prepared a few. Uh, I have, you know, been digging through this code a lot, and um, I'm not really sure what I would want to know. Uh, so I would like you. Uh, well, I would wonder if you might help me uh, figure out what what is there. What is what would you like to know if you wanted to mess with this? Seven, Could I get you to step up sure, to the yeah. mic? Sorry. Just, does, uh, is that good? Yes. So in Drupal 7, the menu system is both for routing the incoming request, but also for displaying the menus on the on the page. Yes. Does this handle that too, or is that some other component? It does to some degree. Um, or, well, uh, this resolution is really small. Uh, no. Ah. It does. Oh, well. Basically, some 
display logic is in here. Is this big enough? Can I make it bigger somehow? All right, much better. Or, or something. <laughs> this is not my day. Um, where's my whim? Uh, you can go back to PHP Storm and do Command 1. Command 1? Ah, shit. Uh, hold on a second. Give me a proper editor. <laughs> <laughs> so some of these things are related to presentation. Um, so basically the, the node operation route turns out to help you uh, define what's you know, does this dis uh, this is a node operation, so let's display the admin menu and a few other things. But as far as the visual visual menu structure, uh, the, all, the the menu module, uh, back, well, back in Drupal 7, there was two parts uh, to the menu system. There was menu ink, which was built into core, which was the routing part, and there was menu.module, which is the let me create a custom mod, uh, menu. So I want to have an about link in my menu, and I want it to point to node slash seven. That part still exists, and I think it's still called menu module as well. Um, and that part is basically uh, that hasn't changed all that much. Uh, I don't know if this is too small, but basically this is. Drupal 8, and the menu links table still contains the the visual menu structure with the names of all the pages and stuff. Um, and I'm not really sure of the implementation detail, but I think that the menu module implements a router that reads from this, or, okay. Um, but so this is uh, this is still separate from the router table, which is much smaller. I don't know. Do you want to clarify? <laughs> I don't want to take over your session. Right. <laughs> um, does that answer your question somewhat? Somewhat. All right. Anyone else? Are we there? Yes. So, if I am on Drupal 8 and I am having like a lot of problems with the routing component and maybe some bugs, and I want to just uh, like overwrite everything, how would I do it? Like to basically plug the other parts that Drupal, you know, implements and stuff, but may basically, uh, I don't know, make maybe Drupal use like PHPCR or something like uh, custom, very custom. Um, is that possible I, or how to do it? I think it would be theoretically possible. There is this file. Um, called Call Services Inc, which here is um, um, Jane Router. Basically, here. Oh, great. These lines says that Drupal Core uses the Symphony Chain Router. I'm actually making it less <laughs> less readable by selecting it. This these lines define declare that the Drupal Core uses Symphony's Chain Router router. Uh, and it wants to add this router dynamic, um, which is defined above, which is the dynamic router. And this 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 uh, services YAML is where it's all bound together. Um, I'm not really sure if it's 
easily possible to override this without actually having to edit this file. Uh, it is, uh, says Larry. <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's that's basically if you if you remove the dynamic router uh, from the picture, then Drupal's routing will never no longer be considered. But I think in doing so, you would basically prevent the function of almost any Drupal module you you install. Um, so I th I think if you want to do that, maybe you don't e actually want to use Drupal. Clear enough. Anyone else? Over there? Do you have any code examples of like just a regular module where you want some custom code or entities that you custom make pop up? Um, you know, normally in Drupal 7, you know, I, I call this menu action and I want it to run this function. How does that work with this new setup? Uh, so, so you're saying you want to pr make a new URL? Yeah, new URL and call this certain function in my module to do what I want it to do. And it's not, it's it's using Drupal stuff, but it's sort of totally custom. It doesn't use the same stuff, right. if that makes sense. I think, uh, actually, the examples in, in Drupal core itself are pretty good. Uh, I used the mode, node module before. It has a, a big routing file here. And basically what you're doing with this, these declarations here, uh, node add page is prim uh, somewhat simple. So you're saying, I want at this URL, node slash add, um, I provide a few things here. But basically this, um, you're saying, you, you're declaring your route and saying which, which controller do I want to handle this route. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know if there's a simpler version somewhere. Yeah, most of these de deal with entity forms. Uh, but if you, this is standard Symfony stuff. Uh, so if you look at the standard Symfony routing do uh, documentation, you can see the like the completely simple brain dead, let's call a controller or no magic um, use case. But you will need a controller. Uh, it's, you can't do what we used to do in Drupal 7 and have a function that does stuff. Okay. You will need to make a controller. Cool, thank you. Um, so in Drupal 6, I think you had to actually go and visit the modules um, uh, listing page in order to uh, pick up new modules that you'd created since the last time you visited the page. In Drupal 7, I think you had to clear the cache, you had to run uh, cron or something like that. Um, what's the process for actually activating new routes in uh, Drupal 8? I think it's still the same. I think you still have to clear the cache uh, because the the router the router table I showed before here it ingests all these routes you have defined in your YAML file, and that is cached, so it doesn't have to read all the modules YAML files and process them for every page request because that would be slow. Uh, so that's pretty much the same. Anyone else? I could also show you, I, I have played a little bit with Xdebug, so you can actually see how it works. Um, because, let's see. Don't die on me now. Um. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, I think the, ba the what really helped me understand how all this stuff happens was simply to fire up Xdebug, see what happens, set breakpoints here and there, see how it jumps through all these different uh, different parts of the the layer. This is conceptually a bit harder to reason about than what we had in Drupal 7, but it is, it is much, much more flexible. Uh, there's a, a, a lot more different points where you can customize stuff without having to override the whole system. 
and sharing code with other projects is, of course, also a super great idea. All right? I think, yeah. Oh, I think it actually is working now, so let's try for a second. Mm. Um, almost. I'm going to insert my secret password here. And then I'm going to enable Xdebug. Uh, oh uh, yeah, somehow stuff never <laughs> works when you're trying to demo it. Maybe it went to PHP Storm instead. Never mind, uh, but Xdebug, yes please. And PHP Storm is also nice when it works. Yeah. Otherwise, thank you and um, enjoy your con.